Hello, everybody. My name is Rob Banke, co-founder at Halborn, and welcome again to another exciting episode of Critical Spotlight. Uh, today, we have Aloy, one of our offensive security engineers over here at Halborn. Aloy, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about this critical finding. Hello, everyone. I'm Aloy. I've been working in cybersecurity for 12 years now. I started by securing web applications, mobile apps, infrastructures, and other kind of systems before diving into the world of Web3 back in 2021. I've been at Halborn for over a year now, uh, where I focus on keeping blockchain projects secure by reviewing uh, EVM smart contracts, so mainly in Solidity, and sometimes also in Viper, which, which I really like. And the vulnerability that I want to talk about today is a critical finding that I recently found. Uh, it was in one of one, one project that had already been audited. So at the beginning, there was no, like, we didn't spot any, like, major changes like, for the main functionality. But then we realized that there was a new inheritance for, for that, for the contract that we were auditing. That uh, inheritan, inherited contract was not in scope for the audit. But it was actually adding more functionalities to the to the main uh, contracting scope, so that uh, those uh, functions were uh, some like swapping uh, where they were adding some swapping cap capabilities. So they were meant to allow the main contract to swap their funds through Uniswap, SushiSwap, like all different DEXs. The problem was that they were not protected at all. So even though the main contract didn't have those functions because they like they were inherited, anyone could call those functions and perform any swap through those DEXs and effectively like um, steal money from from the contract. Right, the main one it had like a withdraw function, so that that one was protected. The problem was that the new ones, the swap ones, were 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 not protected. Were anyone could call them. Yeah, I mean, scary stuff, obviously, right? So, I mean, this is the, the these are the kind of things we're working on all day, every day, um, on behalf of our clients to try to find all the all the things that the bad guys can do, you know, ahead yeah. of us, right? So, I guess um, tell us a little bit about your methodology. Like, how did you go about uncovering this finding? Well, as I said, I come from the Web two uh, security space, and I try to um, use some of the techniques that, that I already like that that I used in, in when I was testing web applications and mobile apps. So the first is to uh, make sure I understand what the project is doing, but especially what they're trying to do. I've observed that sometimes there are like different, uh, there, there, there's, it's not the same what they do uh, and what they try to do. So uh, once I understand what they try to do and what they do, I just make sure the the project is doing what what it's what it intended, right? Yeah. Um, then I also run some automatic tools, uh, automated tools, and then uh, I start reading uh, line by line and following the the more or less the the main uh, logic of the of the contract of the of, of what's in scope. Um, and in that specific case, I uh, there was like the main logic was not like it wasn't it hadn't changed much. Uh, I read through the original security audit, the, the first one, and there was like there were like many changes. But then after after that, I even though I initially didn't notice of, like the, the inheritance, I realized that there was something there, like new functions, and those functions were able, as I mentioned, were able to like would allow the contract to perform swaps. Uh, and they were not protected, so anyone could call them. So anyone could uh, perform swaps in the name, right? As as if they were the the, the client's contract. So yeah, that would that would be more or less my approach. Obviously, you went about finding this through your manual code review process. Uh, what did we recommend to this client on how to fix it? So how would they remediate this? Given given that it was an authorization uh, problem, my main after notifying the client, uh, what I asked is, uh, was whether it was like those functions were necessary or, or, or not. Sometimes we find uh, through inheritance, a lot of functions that maybe are not needed. In that case, they, they were actually needed. So what our recommendation was to just uh, and make sure that the caller was an authorized caller, like an admin. 
or a man a manager or something like that and but they they just implemented that uh, protection well um you know obviously for, for for the most part no one writes bugs directly into their code on purpose <laughs> right so um you know as folks are out there building out there wanting to stay safe in in a general sense what do you recommend to builders on how to build in this web3 space securely i'm also a teacher and when when i what i told what i tell to my to my students is that uh you have to like develop this uh security mindset so we as, as security experts as, as ethical hackers we already have that but sometimes uh developers they, they do not and this is like common and, and this is normal but I think it gives you like an extra skill to have this security mindset. So first is that as a developer, just develop this this mindset. Is like you have to ask yourself a lot of questions, like uh, what could go wrong, what would happen if an attacker reached that part of the code, and things like that. Then obviously, like conduct security reviews, not just by third party like security firms like Harborn, but also like by an internal team, especially for medium or or big uh, size um, projects. Also, uh, for that specific case, I would also recommend like be careful with the test coverage. Our clients didn't have any tests at all reg regarding those uh, new functions. So at the beginning, as I said, they the, the, those functions, those unprotected functions, they went unnoticed because they were inherited using a contract that was not in scope, but also the tests didn't cover that part. So. At the beginning, it was not clear. So please make sure you you extend your security, like your test coverage. And finally, for this specific case, for the authorization uh, practices, just again ask yourself who can call this, who is supposed to be calling this, and and all these kind of of, of questions. Yeah, it's this concept of defense in depth, right? Like just adding layer right, on exactly. layer of security protocols on top of one another, and you know, it's there's no one silver bullet. And of course, security never ends, right? Like development should never end because you're constantly building and pushing new code. And so security should never end either. And so you want to constantly exactly. have that approach. So incredible. Well, Aloy, thank you so much for taking some time and talking to our audience today about just best best security practices and your findings. And uh, thank you, audience, for turning in, tuning in to another episode of Critical Spotlight. We'll see you at the next one. Thanks, everybody.